Welcome to module 2 of the course Genome Editing and Engineering and in this lecture we are going to discuss about breakage of genomic DNA. There are various DNA damaging agents and they cause different types of DNA damage and whenever a DNA is damaged inside the cell that is detected by the cell's inherent system and certain repair mechanisms are activated to repair the damage caused by the damaging agents. We will discuss about these various DNA damaging agents in our lecture today as well as what kind of damage these agents cause to the DNA molecules. In the next lecture, we will discuss about the various DNA repair mechanisms that are activated as a result of the DNA damage that occurs due to these damaging agents. Before that let us discuss what do you mean by DNA damage and why DNA damage occurs. DNA is a inherently reactive molecule. Both endogenous and exogenous agents can modify DNA structure. These modifications can lead to a single or double stranded DNA breakage. In brief DNA damage is the disruption or alteration of the basic chemical or physical structure of DNA that can affect the normal function of the genes encoded in it. So, you can see if the breakage happens in one single strand, we call it as a single strand break. If the breakage happens in both the strands, we call this as a double strand break. And there are many agents which can cause both the single strand break and the double strand break in DNA molecules. Let us start with uh, simple things. What are the different types of DNA damage? DNA damage can happen at the level of a single base. We call them as single base alteration which can be a depurination reaction or it can be deamination of cytosine to uracil or adenine to hypoxanthine and it can be as simple as the alkylation of a base and there can be insertion or deletion of a single nucleotide and in certain cases incorporation of some of the base analogs into the particular site. Other kinds of DNA damage may involve more than one base and they can be two base alterations. So, these are induced by UV light which induced time in time in uh, dimer formation or it can be little bit extensive which can be chain breaks which happens due to ionizing radiations or radioactive disintegration of the backbone element or due to the action of oxidative free radical uh, formation. And beyond these, there can be cross linkage of the DNA strands. So, some linkages may happen between bases in the same or in the opposite strand or between the DNA and the protein molecule, the histone molecules onto which the DNA wraps around. Now, let us discuss the various factors which causes DNA damage. As already told, there may be endogenous factors or there may be exogenous factors. The endogenous factors are inherent within the cellular environment and they can be due to some of the molecular events that take place inside the cell. For example, due to replication errors or DNA based mismatches. Uh, topoisomerase DNA complexes, spontaneous base, base deamination or formation of a basic sites, oxidative damage or DNA methylation. And exogenous factors are all the factors which are external to the cell and they act from outside. And they can be certain radiations like ionizing ultraviolet or they can be certain chemicals like alkylating agents or aromatic amines or polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons or reactive electrophiles or any toxins and also certain other environmental stresses. Let us discuss first about the endogenous DNA damage. Uh, let us start with replication errors. So, we know that DNA synthesis uh, involves the activity of DNA polymerases. The DNA polymerases have varying fidelity uh, in inside uh, the cell. In humans, roughly around 3, three to 10 to the power 9 base pairs are replicated during 
every cell replication by the high fidelity DNA polymerase delta and epsilon, alpha, beta, delta, gamma, lambda, rev1 and many other such factors and prime pole are the low high fidelity uh, DNA uh, polymerases. These high fidelity DNA polymerases ensures the incorporation of correct deoxynucleotide against the template DNA during replication and the low fidelity act just opposite to it and this contributes to the replication errors uh, to a large extent. So, this figure sums up the DNA replication fidelity. There are certain determinants of DNA uh, replication of fidelity which uh, depends on the uh, DNA polymerase uh, that is being uh, deployed for the process and the proofreading activity of the DNA polymerase. If the proofreading activity is high, then the fidelity will be high. If the proofreading is low, the fidelity will be low. Then there are other things like the thermodynamic stability and base pair energetics of the incoming DNTP and template DNA and incorporation of correctly shaped DNTP in the active site of DNA polymerase through a geometric selection. If that is not occurring, then there will be replication errors, errors and uh, the DNTP homeostasis play a big uh, role in this entire process and uh, after replication there may be some kind of mismatch repair which we tell as the post replication uh, mismatch repairs. So, base substitution insertion and deletion error occur at a frequency of around 10 to the power minus 6 to 10 to the power minus 8 uh, per cell per generation. Change of the DNA reading frame may occur due to uh, slip strand uh, mispairing events at repetitive sequence uh, leading to the insertion and deletion of the nucleotides. The DNA strands may loop out due to strand slippage during DNA replication resulting addition of an extra nucleotide or deletion of a nucleotide of the uh, daughter strand. So, if you have a template strand in which the replication uh, occurs, uh, there may be looping out of the daughter strand or there may be looping out of the uh, template strand. So, in the first case an additional nucleotide is added to the new strand, in the latter a nucleotide is missed in the uh, new strand. So, this is how the replication error occurs. Let us now discuss another type of uh, DNA damage uh, which is the DNA base uh, mismatch. Uh, these are defects in DNA which occur due to non-complementary base alignment in the same base pair of a DNA duplex. These mismatches are corrected quickly by mismatch repair proteins. Uh, failures in detecting and correcting the DNA mismatch will lead to the mutations. A transition happens when a purine nucleotide is changed into another uh, purine uh, A to G or a pyrimidine nucleotide is changed to another uh, pyrimidine uh, C to T. Transversions are any mutations in which a purine is replaced with a pyrimidine or vice versa. Transversions are more likely to change the amino acid sequence of proteins uh, than transitions and in this figure you can see the A to G transition and uh, A to C or G to T, G to T uh, transversions. There are other agents which causes DNA uh, damage for example, topomyrases, topoisomerases are one of them. Uh, James Wang discovered the first DNA topoisomerase in 1971 from E. coli as uh, omega protein and this is the paper he published in Journal of uh, Molecular Biology. Uh, there are two type of topoisomerases, type 1 and type 2. The type 1 nicks single strand of the DNA double helix, relaxes and then reanals it. Uh, the type 2 nicks both the strand of a DNA double helix, relaxes, supercoils and uh, reanals uh, the molecule. So, here are some of the examples of the types 1A, 1B, 1C and type 2A and 2B uh, topoisomerases. They are basically a family of essential enzymes and they are present abundantly in both prokaryotes and eukaryotes. Uh, they can act as endogenous uh, source of uh, DNA damage. Their principal function is to relax superhelical DNA during uh, replication and transcription. Uh, the 
FOP1 uh, enzyme transiently produces a nick on the supercoil DNA, facilitating rotation of the broken strand around the top one bound DNA strand to relax it. Then the top one relegates the breakage by realigning the 5 prime OH of the DNA with the tyrosine DNA phosphodiester bone to restore the complex. DNA relations can be formed due to misalignment of the 5 prime OH DNA ends. In addition to these, DNA adducts and normal abnormal DNA structures can irreversibly trap the top one DNA cleavage complex into DNA lesions which are known as uh, suicidal complexes. This figure briefly sums up the topom isomerase mediated DNA damage and uh, we can start with this step 1 where the top 2 binds to the G and T double stranded DNA top to uh, recognition sites. This is followed by the ATP binding that catalyzes double strand break in the G segment allowing the T segment to pass through it. In the third, third step, ATP hydrolysis occurs which induces a conformational change to allow the second double stranded helix to pass through the double stranded break. In the fourth step, top 2 mediates relegation of the double strand break and the T DNA segment is released. And in the fifth step, you can see the G DNA segment is released and the enzyme returned to its original uh, conformation. So, this is the mechanism by which top 2 cleavage and re relegation uh, happens. Let us look into the uh, top one uh, mediated uh, DNA damage. The top one is binding to the DNA in the first step as you can see, then it nicks in one uh, single uh, strand. Then there is a strand passage step and then a relegation happens after which the top one is released. So, the top one induces a transient nick on the supercoil DNA to facilitate DNA rotation of the broken strand around the top one bound DNA strand for DNA relaxation. After that, uh, top one relegates uh, the breakage. In certain cases, if these, lef these are left unrepaired, uh, the DNA would be damaged and these mutations will lead to uh, cell death. Let us now discuss about the base, base deamination uh, uh, reaction. Uh, this is basically a process of removing an amino group uh, from a, a molecule. Deamination of DNA bases occurs spontaneously in human and other organisms where adenine, cytosine, guanine and 5-methyl cytosine became hypogentine, uracil, gentine and thymine uh, respectively. Uh, base deamination is far more common in single stranded DNA than in uh, double stranded uh, DNA. Uh, you can see here the name of the normal base and the name of the deaminated base which has already been uh, uh, discussed over here. This table helps us in remembering them in a better way. And you can see here uh, the action of adenine deaminage uh, which has converted uh, adenine uh, into a hypogentine uh, molecule by the process of uh, deamination. In deamination of cytosine, the native CZ base pairing alters to a UA base pair in the first round of replication, which in the next round of replication results in a CZ to TA mutation. Cytosine and 5 methyl cytosine are the most frequently deaminated, but 5 methyl cytosine is deaminated 3 to 4 times more frequently than uh, cytosine. The deaminated cytosine is rapidly removed from DNA by uracil DNA glycosylase. The GT base pair resulting from deamination of 5 methyl cystonin is a substrate for the thymine DNA glycosylase and the relatively slow Mitchmas repair process. Consequently, the CG to AT transition at the CPG sequences accounts for one third of the single site mutations responsible for hereditary diseases in human. So, uh, we cannot underwind uh, base deamination reactions they play a huge role in uh, human health, particularly genetic diseases. Now, let us discuss about a basic or uh, sites or where uh, the base is removed from that site and this reaction can be 
uh, removal of a purine or a pure, pure, uh, pyrimidine. Accordingly, this is called as a, a purinic or uh, a pyrimidinic uh, site. So, abasic sites are locations on the DNA that lacks a purine or pyrimidine base naturally or due to uh, DNA damage. And you can see here a, a site where there is no any uh, base because that has been removed. This would have been A uh, because the opposite strand had T, but due to this uh, A basic site reaction, there is no any uh, adenine over there. They are constantly generated when the N glycosyl bone hydrolyzes naturally or gets cleaved by a DNA glycosylase. A basic sites or apirinic or apirimidinic sites are the most common cell lesions with estimates ranging from 10,000 to 20,000 sites in each human cell every day. And uh, this has to be uh, addressed by the cell uh, frequently and you can just understand the level of repair work that goes on uh, every day inside the uh, human cell. And if any of these are left behind, that causes the DNA damage. What are the mechanisms of epicyte uh, formation or abasic site uh, formation? The potential sources of epicyte formation include uh, base damage, spontaneous base loss, cytosine removal and deamination and the involvement of glycosylase enzyme. The epicyte induces destabilization of and glycosidic bones, spontaneous or catalyzed deamination of cytosine generates the uracil. Subsequent action of uracil DNA glycolyse glycosylase produces an epicyte. Let us now discuss about the oxidative uh, DNA damage. Reactive oxygen species are available inside the cell which occurs due to cellular respiration, especially the electron response chain in aerobic organisms. They can also be obtained from anabolic processes, peroxisomal metabolism, catabolic oxidases, etc. The most prominent reactive oxygen species include superoxide radical, hydroxyl radical and hydrogen peroxide. Raw species provide vital physiological functions at low levels. For example, serving as cellular messengers in redox signaling cascades and inducing important immune system defense responses to invading uh, pathogens. However, they are also harmful because they cause DNA damage. Especially when ROS levels are high enough in the cell, they can produce over 100 distinct oxidative base lesions and two deoxyribose alterations. The hydroxyl radical produced during the phantom, uh, phantom like reactions between uh, Fe2 plus and hydrogen peroxide are the most reactive and capable of damaging uh, DNA. The electrophilic hydro hydroxyl radical reacts with DNA bases by various ways. Number one by adding to their uh, double bonds. Number two abstracting hydrogen atoms from their methyl groups and number three attacking the sugar residue in their uh, immediate vicinity. And you can see here the conversion of guanine into an intermediate 8 oxoguanine and finally getting it converted to 8 hydroxyguanine. If this is not repaired, oxidative damage can lead to mutations and or altered uh, gene transcription through mis mispairing with adenine resulting in G to T and C to A substitutions in the cell, in the genome. The hydroxyl radical from Fenton's reaction causes an imido, imidazole ring opening in guanine and adenine resulting in the fragmented purine structure. You can see here the transformation of guanine. Uh, the thymine glycol is another major DNA lesion produced when a hydroxyl radical attacks on the C5, C6 double bonds of uh, thymine. Next we discuss about the DNA methylation which was first discovered by mammalian uh, in mammalian genome by Rollin uh, Hotchkiss in 1948. DNA methylation is a heritable epigenetic change 
that involves the covalent transfer of a methyl group to the C5 position of the cytosine ring catalyzed by a family of enzymes named as DNA methyl transferases or DNMTs. So, here you can see cytosine and upon the removal of the uh, methyl group, uh, it gets converted into methylated. So, let us discuss about the oxidative uh, DNA damage uh, where the hydroxy radical from Fenton's reaction causes an imidazole ring opening in guanine and adenine resulting in the fragmented purine structure form a midopyrimidine. Thymine glycol is another major DNA lesion which is produced when a hydroxyl radical attacks on the C5, C6 double bonds of thymine. Let us now discuss about the DNA methylation process which was first discovered in mammalian genome by Rollin Hodgkins in 1948. DNA methylation is a heritable epigenetic change that involves the covalent transfer of a methyl group to the C5 position on the cytosine ring catalyzed by a family of enzymes named as DNA methyl transferases or DNMTs. And you can see here the addition of the methyl group uh, to a cytosine to form the uh, methylated uh, cytosine. S adenosylmethionine or SAM is used as a methyl donor by methyl transferases during normal methylation reactions. It can spontaneously generate up to 4000 N7 methyl guanine, 600 N3 methyl adenine, and 10 to 30 O6 methyl guanine residues per mammalian cell per day. Choline, betaine, endogenous nitrosated bile salts, tobacco smoke, diet, pollution, or derivatives of N nitroso compounds, etc., also causes uh, DNA methylation. O6 methyl guanine and the related residues O methyl thymine and O4 ethyl thymine are strong mutagens which can produce ZC to AT and TA to CZ transition mutations uh, respectively. Now, let us move on to the various factors which causes exogenous DNA damage. One of the most important agent which causes exogenous uh, DNA damage are the ionizing radiations. Ionizing radiation is a form of high energy radiation that has the ability to disrupt covalent bonds by releasing electrons from atoms and molecules. They can be classified into X-rays, gamma rays, alpha particles, beta particles and neutrons and damages DNA directly primarily through double strand breaks. The secondary consequences include the production of reactive oxygen species which oxidizes proteins and lipids causing DNA damage such as abasic sites and single strand breaks. The most deadly kind of DNA damage caused by IR is double strand breaks which are mostly repaired either through homologous recombination or non-homologous and joining processes which we will uh, discuss in later lectures. And briefly you can see here the type of DNA damage caused by the ionizing radiations. It can be direct damage or it can be indirect damage. In the case of direct damage is it causes double or single strand breaks which leads to cell death if not uh, repaired. And the case of indirect damage it generates free radicals and reactive oxygen species and that leads to the formation of the double or single strand break and cell death uh, similarly. The next as in that we are discussing are the ultraviolet radiation. Uh, UVR is one of the most effective and carcinogenic exogenous agents that can cause damage to DNA and alter the genome integrity and may affect the normal life process of all organisms ranging from prokaryotes to mammals. Those in laboratory must be careful that while working in the uh, laminar hood uh, to create uh, a sterile condition uh, UV radiation is used. Exposure to such radiation may actually be very, very harmful because it, because it causes DNA damage. UBV 
is a potent component of the solar radiation that brings about chemical modification in DNA and changes its molecular structure by the formation of dimers. The other components of the ultraviolets are UVA and uh, UVC. What are the UV induced, induced uh, pyrimidine uh, photoproducts? So, particularly UVB causes three major types of uh, DNA lesions, uh, the formation of CPDs or cyclobutene uh, pyrimidine dimers, then pyrimidine 64 pyrimidine photoproducts or 64 PPs or uh, DWAR isomers. And you can see in this particular figure the structures of DNA duplexes showing the presence of the lesions uh, in green uh, such as uh, CPD, uh, 64 PP and uh, 64 uh, DWAR uh, dimer. So, DNA can be damaged directly by uh, UVV and this figure you can see the UV induced direct DNA damage. The UVB photons are directly absorbed by the DNA. Possible reactions from the excited state leads to the formation of a thiamine thiamine cyclobutene uh, dimer. The CPDs are the most abundant and most cytotoxic lesions produced after UV irradiation while the 64 PPs may have more serious potentially lethal metagenesis effect. Photoisomerization of 64 PP, 64 PPs at wavelength greater than 290 nanometer produces the DWAR isomers. The capacity of UV radiation to damage a DNA base is dependent on the flexibility of the DNA. The nature of the bases also plays a key role as the distribution of the dimeric photoproducts significantly depends on the pyrimidine bases involved. CPDs develop at higher rates in single stranded DNA and at the flexible extremities of poly DADT tracks, but not in their rigid center, suggesting that sequences that promote bending and unwinding are preferred places for DNA damage production. Here you can see the various DNA photoproducts formed by ultraviolet radiation. Figure A shows the normal DTPT, figure B shows the cis syn cyclobutene pyrimidine dimer or CPD and figure C shows the oxytene uh, intermediate. The figure D shows a DT64T photoproduct with atom numbering and E shows the uh, DIVA isomer. What are UV induced purine photoproducts? UV induced purine photoproducts are the photoproducts that involve at least one adenine residue that undergoes photocycloaddition reaction with contiguous adenine or thymine upon exposure to UVB radiation. Photodimerization of adenine involves the cycloaddition of N7C8 double bond of the 5 prime A across the C6 and C5 positions of the 3 prime A and generates a very unstable azetidine intermediate. This intermediate photoproduct is split into two different adenine photoproducts, the adenine dimer and the Porsche photoproduct by opposing uh, reaction pathways. The next most important type of agents are the alkylating agents. DLA alkylation is the addition of alkyl groups to specific bases resulting in DNA alkylation products. The alkylating agents transfer alkyl groups to the DNA. Methylating agents may occur endogenously or exogenously from the environment. They damage DNA bases at different sites and generates mutagenic and toxic lesions. Simple methylating agents generate adducts at the N and O atoms in the DNA bases. Generally, O alkylations are strong mutagens, whereas N alkylations are less mutagenic. N alkylated purines are the primary products of DNA methylation, which are efficiently removed by base excision repair and other damage pathways. So, once the DNA damage happens, the DNA damage pathways are activated and the repair uh, takes place. If left unrepaired, O6 uh, methyl GC ambiguous pairs or O6 methyl GT misspaced pairs can form during replication. In the next round of replication, the O6 methylated GT pair can become 
AT transition mutations as shown in figure A. In figure B, you can see that O6 methylated GT and O6 methylated GC pairs are recognized by the mismatch repair system, which creates a single strand break, uh, causes replication arrest, and finally leads to a double stranded break. In figure C, you know, we can see homologous recombination and non homologous enjoining uh, playing a role in the repair of the double strand breaks. And alkylations may play a role in the repair of DSBs as well. And alkylations are repaired by either base excision repair or LKB homologs, and if not repair, the DSBs will occur. We will have detailed discussion on the repair mechanism, but this is just to show that if the damages are left unrepaired, then the various kind of DNA breakage like DSB or SSB uh, may occur. Another kind of agents which are responsible for DNA damage are the aromatic amines. The aromatic amines are organic compounds consisting of an aromatic ring attached to an amine. The heterocyclic aromatic amines or HAAs are formed at parts per billion level in fried or grilled meat products. So, uh, the food we eat may actually have some kind of amines and they can be dangerous as well, but the lower concentration uh, uh, does not make them that unsafe or there may be protein pyrolysis or Maillard reaction and all of them has been uh, found to be carcinogenic at a particular concentration and exposure. So, let us look into the mechanism of mutagenicity induced by uh, aromatic amines over here. So, these N-acetyl uh, transferase or O-acetyl transferase or sulfur transferases uh, converts these aromatic amines uh, into some of the intermediate products which are finally converted into nitrogen ion and these are having high reactivity particularly uh, along with uh, uh, DNA uh, molecules. To create covalent DNA adducts, aromatic amines must be metabolically activated into a reactive electrophilic species. Therefore, they are known as indirect carcinogens. The first step in the mutagenic pathway of aromatic amines is N-hydroxylation by cytochrome P450 enzymes, primarily by CYP1A2 with 1A1 and 1B1 members of the CYP1 family and other P450 isomers are also involved to some extent in certain cases. This results into aryl hydroxylamines which are extremely reactive towards DNA nucleobases, particularly guanines. The most promising technique for avoiding mutagenicity for the bulk of aromatic amines is to prevent metabolic activation by CYP1A2. Uh, DNA adducts. What are DNA adducts? DNA adduct is a piece of DNA covalently bound to a chemical, which may be sephrol, benzopyrinediol, acetaldehyde, etc. Hello alkenes, alkanes, aromatic amines, methylating agents, they may all be bound to the DNA molecule uh, covalently. The DNA adducts of these compounds can be formed at exocyclic nitrogen and oxygen atoms of the nucleobases including the N7, N3, N2, N1 and O6 positions of guanine, the N7, N6, N3 and N1 position of adenine, the N3, N4 and O2 position of cytosine and the N3, O2 and O4 positions of thymine. And you can see the various uh, positions in the guanine, adenine, cytosine and thymine molecules. So, you can see the those with the green color are the most nucleophilic positions in G and here with the yellow color are the most nucleophilic positions in uh, adenine and some of the uh, arrow 
indicates the uh, propensity for the various reaction as shown over here uh, in this uh, diagram. So, we know that DNA adducts are uh, getting covalently bound uh, to the DNA molecule through the various bases and if it is not repaired left unattended the DNA adduct will interfere with DNA transcription and replication and this will induce uh, mutation. Some DNA adducts induce only a single type of mutation while others are capable of inducing multiple types of mutation. Alkylating chemicals for example, produce DNA adducts at the O6 position of guanine and O2 and O4 position of, of thymine resulting in GC to AT, AT to GC and AT to TA mutation while some other adducts can cause GC to TA, GC to AT, GC to CZ as well as a frame shift, shift mutation. We have also already told that another kind of damage is uh, DNA cross-linking. So, it may happen due to exogenous or endogenous substances which react with two nucleotides of DNA to produce a covalent bond between the two and this results in the cross-linking. This cross-link can form between opposite strands of the uh, double strand, DNA double strand which is the called the intrastrand linkage or within the same strand and this is called uh, intrastrand linkage. So, you can see the linkage is happening within the uh, single strand and here the linkage is happening between uh, both the strand. And there are also certain other phenomena where there is no any linkage, but certain molecules get intercalated between the uh, stacked bases. So, whenever some kind of intra or intrastrand cross-linking takes place, it causes cell death because uh, it halts certain processes like replication and uh, transcription. Chemicals like bifunctional alkylating agents, platinum compounds and sorelin produce covalent adducts with DNA bases on both strands of DNA leading to the formation of interstrand crosslinks which prevent DNA strand separation. In the earlier figure you can see here this intrastrand cross-linking taking place where both the strands are covalently bound to one another. So, this will prevent the separation of the two strands. Uh, however, in intrastrand crossing uh, this does not occur because there is no any cross-linking of the two strands. Now, if this cross-linking is left unrepaired, uh, the intrastrand cross-links blocks the DNA replication and or DNA transcription totally which leads to cell death. It has been esti estimated that as few as 20 intestinal crosslinks in a genome can be lethal to cells uh, both in bacteria and humans that lack the ability to remove the uh, crosslink. On the positive side, many of the anti-cancer drugs currently in use today rely on these cytotoxic effect occurring due to the intestinal across linkages. So, let us examine in little bit detail how this intrastrand cross linking takes place uh, due to certain agents. Here we are taking the example of uh, nitrogen masters uh, which are bifunctional and alkylating agents and they contain reactive N and B's 2 chloroethyl amine functional group as shown in uh, number 1. These particular compounds react with guanine residues in DNA via the aziridinium intermediate as shown in number 2 to form an N alkylated guanine derivative as shown in uh, number 3. One these, once these N alkylated guanine uh, derivative is formed, uh, this forms another reactive aziridinium intermediate as shown in uh, number 3. So, there are two steps in which this aziridinium intermediates are formed once in the 
first step and another one is in the second step from 3 to 4. This aziridinium, the second aziridinium number 4 reacts with second guanine residue to form the intrastrand crosslink number uh, 5 or with water to form 2 hydroxy ethyl monoalert. So, uh, this crosslinking happens in two steps. First, one guanidine gets covalently bound to a adduct and in the second step, this guanine with the adduct binds with the second uh, guanine. So, thereby it forms a covalent bond between the two guanines located in the two strands of the DNA and thereby cross linking the two uh, DNA strands. Now, in certain cases there may be formation of a basic sites as well. Here for example, one single N alkylated guanine is uh, being shown here. Now, these N alkylated guanine uh, uh, to some extent is unstable and this can undergo a further reaction resulting in cleavage of the N glycosyl bond leading to the formation of an A basic site. So, this uh, particular guanine is removed from here. So, uh, the base is removed in this case. So, a, a basic site is created. Alternatively, in the second pathway, you can see the imidazole ring of the alkylated guanine can, can undergo hydrolysis to produce a formamidopyrimidine or FAPI derivative, which is relatively resistant. So, here is the opening up over here, you can see here. Uh, this is relatively resistant to further chemical reaction due to which the intestine crosslink remains intact, although in an altered structural form. So, we have seen that by various mechanisms uh, due to various factors endogenous and exogenous DNA molecules get damaged because it is a comparatively very active uh, molecule or susceptible molecule. Now, what happens if DNA damage occurs? What are the implications of this? Cellular DNA damage uh, is implicated in the etiology and progression of many different types of human disorders and diseases. If these are not repaired by the cellular systems in place. Much of the current research in the DNA damage field is devoted towards understanding the mechanism and biological implications of DNA lesions that turn into genetic mutations which ultimately lead to the development of various diseases, uh, mostly uh, cancer. DNA damage is also implicated in the development of other prevalent human diseases ranging from neurodegenerative disorders such as Alzheimer's to chronic obstructive pulmonary diseases or COPD. So, these are some of the references which we took for preparation of this lecture. Uh, thank you. Mm -hmm.